All right, so today we have a LG Stylo 6 uh, from T-Mobile. Uh, another lot here, whatever LG Gate is. Not a lot on the box. Uh, if you've been uh, around the channel for a long time, I actually have an old LG Stylo, the LG Stylo 3 Plus. Uh, I bought two of these uh, for two different family members, and they've held up really good over time. Obviously, it's a little dated design at this point. Now it's just two pieces of tape back there that are cut open. Today is June 1st. It was released on Friday, May 29th, and they did not have a pre-order option, so I ordered it through T-Force. They made me pay for shipping, the cheapest shipping, $6.99, and it came here today uh, on June 1st. Here's the bone itself. They only had one color available, this weird glossy color that I'm not really crazy about. SIM card up, I won't use. A uh, little book for the Stylo 6. Uh, a weird little SIM card tool. Very standard A to C cable. And a little charging brick. And it does say fast charge. Hard to see those details there. On the device itself, there's this little plastic wrap good size device. Now you do have, oh, like a little sticker over the camera, which I like. There is a sticker on top. The old one was battery replaceable, so they have these stickers on here. My LG V60 had the same little IMI sticker. Take that off as well. And there's a little sticker on the bottom and a sticker on the side. Side sticker off. And then there should be one more over here. There you can see that reflective coating there. Smooth to the touch. I like this gray color on the side. It's not quite silver. It's almost like the gray of the Samsung uh, S20. There is a slight camera bump, but it's very small. And that should be a fingerprint sensor. On the side, which have your volume buttons. This is like a Google Assistant button, which I don't like, which they didn't have that. A very large looking tray. So there's their funky little SIM tool. Let's pop this guy out. Oh, that's why it's so wide, because they're side by side. Normally they go all the way in long ways, but uh, that's a neat little design. And it tells you the Nano SIM and the Micro SD labeled. Obviously, the size will tell you apart, but it's nice to have little nuances like that. The tiny little SIM tool. I lose those all the time, anyhow, so I'm sure that will be no difference. Goes back in real easy. Uh, on the bottom, we have an actual headphone jack, USB C. It's probably a microphone port there, speaker grill, probably. And look, they've updated this stylus. It's still just a you know, it's not like a Wacom, like on the Note. It's still just a regular stick that touches the screen with a rubber tip. But it's nice that they've integrated the style here, like the Note, as opposed to... It's a really nice looking phone that way. There's a little microphone port here. And on this side should be the power button. Just for reference, here is the old uh, previous style. We can see how this... Uh, it was all weird, right? And you can see just how silly it looks compared to the how dated, how fast they get dated. And this back, of course, came off. So you can get to the battery pack. We also got a 128 gig card in there. And you can see the screen obviously is not going to compare. We'll set that aside. Let's go ahead and boot this bad boy up. Power button. This is the first time I'm booting it up. It is the T-Mobile version. There is a notch, of course. It's very reminiscent to my LG V60. Here's my Note 10 Plus in my comparison. So it's only like $220 or something like that. Uh, I bought it myself, of course. Uh, it is a great price for such a large phone. So I mean, usually when we buy a the budget phones or the cheaper price phones, they're smaller screens or it's not as good spec wise. So I'm pulling up the L the T Mobile site so you can see the actual specs on it. It's only sixty four gigabytes of memory, which is a little small. 
$252 is what the full price is. Uh, it does have three cameras with a 13 megapixel front facing selfie camera, a 6.8 full HD plus screen, uh, so 20 by 5 by 9 full vision, what is it really called? Uh, 3D surround sound stereo speakers. We'll see how that is. 4,000 milliamp battery is pretty good for such a, a light, uh, you know, inexpensive device. Uh, it has Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth 5.0, which is good. The processor is where you're kind of saving money on. It's the MediaTek uh, Helio P35. Now, this is where you get trouble. It's only 3 gigabytes of RAM. You know, that would be a little difficult when it comes to smaller devices. It takes them forever to boot up here. Uh, the weight is 7.73 ounces. I don't know how much that compares to other devices, but... So, let's compare that to my son currently has version of the Motorola is the Revelry Plus. Alright, so the Revelry Plus is what he currently has, which is also only a 64 gig, and it's $300. And it's obviously a year older, or at least a couple months older. So for that price, you're getting a 16 megapixel camera, uh, only a 6.2 inch screen, 3000 milliamp battery, now it does have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 636, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. So uh, that would be the trade-off Right, you're getting a bigger screen but less RAM and a bigger battery, which is you know all good things. So it might be worth it, really. Now, obviously, this will have the T the LG skin. A lot of times, the LG skins are more uh, are heavier than like the Motorola is pretty uh, st almost like stock. They're calling the notch a second screen, so I'm gonna leave the notch on there, right? I'm going to skip a SIM card for now. I'm going to set my son's phone up on this. Let me connect it to my Wi-Fi. I'm liking just how big the device is. I mean, personally, I like big phones. I'm a large man with large hands. Uh, you know, I don't like the smaller phones. Like, I loved the Pixel 3a XL, and I just thought it was too small for my hands. I wasn't too small for my hands, necessarily, but I prefer a larger phone. So the Note 10 Plus has been my daily driver since it came out. Essentially, uh, or last, it's almost a year old at this point, and I've kept it. I got the LG V60, which I'm recording this on. I'm a big fan of LG cameras. I like LG phones in general. So I have high hopes for this guy. And at that price, it could be the best budget phone on their on T-Mobile site. And you know, you don't have to pay full price. You can do EIP, which is like ten dollars a month. And just to clarify, no one's giving me free phones. I had to buy this myself. But I will be keeping it. Unless it's just shit, I'm going to keep it. I don't copy. I like to set up things fresh. Alright, I'm going to sign in with my son's account. By default, it has LG's keyboard, which I'm not a huge fan of. I will replace it with Swift Key. So, we're still setting up. Size-wise, I'm a big fan of this. Like, i got big hands and I still can't even get it around there. Uh, it's still narrower than the... Like Note 9, that's one thing that I, I'm always coming back to, or Note 10. See how it sticks over. I like the width of the phone, so some people don't like that. Check and see if there's any updates. Alright, just agree to general Google stuff. Uh, set up the fingerprint. We'll test the fingerprint sensor. And you gotta, of course, add a pen first. Alright, so place your finger on the fingerprint sensor. Skip the, oh no, don't skip Mary. So it doesn't tell you. So you just gotta do it. So I'm gonna hit this finger. So it's a small sensor and I have a big finger, but it seems to be doing okay. Of course, you can add more fingerprints, but. All right, Google says it's built into the phone, of course. That's this button here. You can turn that off, I believe, in settings. I don't like that. I would prefer that not be there. But we'll take it. So review additional apps. So Google News Feed. Uh, there's McAfee for T-Mobile Security we don't want. Visual Voicemail I do want. And the Name ID service. Uh, I don't think it works very well, but I do use it. All right, Legal Documents. So I don't want an app drawer you can just swipe up. I'm going to set this one up fresh. Alright, so there is the default home screen. 
click on the weather. Here's my current location. I don't want that. Oh, it has gestures. I don't like gestures. We'll change that shortly. All right. So there is the default home screen. Oh, this will be a prime time to use this guy. So let's take this out. So, oh, look, see so your little box there, right? I like that a lot. So you can do like a screen memo. We'll leave that up in case my son wants to use it. I don't know what happened there. I'll have to figure these tools out. It's a little slow, but it's a brand new phone, so I don't know what's going on here. So I like having the screenshot tool up here. LG does that, and I'm a big fan of it. I wish every device did that. We'll turn on the surround sound. Uh, the Wi-Fi sound, Bluetooth rotation, NFC, I don't use. It's on there. People ask me that. I don't use you. I don't understand why people get so excited by UFC. Not UFC. <laughs> <laughs> NFC. Uh, let's see if there's anything more in here. You can add storage, grade, still a color. Okay, so there's no screen recorder. So on the... I'm going to get back to those gestures right away uh, let's see so, navigation bar I will make it buttons I think is that your button combination so back yeah so I like that most people probably don't like that but I do like that so we'll leave that there I will say Right out the box, it's pretty sluggish. Now, there are stuff going on in the background here. Uh, it's like you're completing setup, still installing an application, so I'll allow that. But while we're here, let's check it out. It's non removable battery. Another reminder about that. Home screen it has comfort view, which will give you the blue light at a certain time. I like that. We'll turn that on. From sunset to sunrise, I'm a big fan of that feature. Night mode, we can set the theme to dark, so I will use that. Does it mess up my bar? Yeah, so right now it is very slow and draggy. Let me turn off auto brightness. And I, I think LG is not very good at brightness. So I usually manually set that. Although I think Samsung's one of the only people that get. Uh, what's going on here? Is there no swipe up? I'll set this to a minute. They can change your home to what? Home and app drawer. Oh, there we go. So you do this and get rid of the app drawer icon. That makes sense. So now you can swipe up and get to your apps. All right. I like that. And there's an audio recorder app. I like that. So here's what's pre-installed. T-Mobile just has mobile hotspot visual. So these two they asked me about, so I'm fine with that. Google apps. Uh, so Google, Chrome, Gmail, YouTube Music, Drive. See if there's any bonuses for Drive. Sometimes they give you like a, some free storage. Eh, it does not appear so. Alright, so let's go back here. Drive, Duo, Knock Sheets, Slides, Google Pay, Files. Standard stuff there. Audio Recorder app from... I like that a lot. I know a lot of people probably don't use Audio Recorder apps as much as I do, but I do really like it when they have their own app there. Calculator. Google Calculator, Google Calendars. So LG used to have their own calendars. Yeah, so LG used to have their own calendar, which I like. And I wish we still had this option. Because I don't like Google Calendar. That's one of the reasons I like my Samsung device still, because it still has Samsung Calendar, and I like that. Camera app, we'll look at that in a minute. Clock, contacts, FM radio, which I don't give a shit about. 
its own gallery. I like that. Game launcher. Google Maps, their own messaging app, which I'll replace with the Google Messages. I do like, I used to like their app a lot, but now I've gotten used to Google Messages because of RCS and being able to use it on the web, so I would have a hard time going back. Their own phone app, their own music app. Quick Memo, which I like a lot. Smart World, uh, which is kind of shitty. T-Mobile, T-Mobile Play, which is garbage. Well, let me check first. Uh, Update Center, LG, then Q, also garbage, and the Play Store. So first, let's go ahead and just check our settings. See how much storage we have available. So of the 64, 19 gigs are in use. All right, and then let's check for any updates available. App updates. This will be Sam or LG's updates. So LG has a couple of built-in apps. This is where you would up, up update their specific apps as opposed to the Play Store. I do like this balance a lot. It's, it's getting a little more fluid, so let's check for an update. It shows we're on April 1st, security patch, and it's June 1st, so hopefully there's something available and there is not. So that's a, kind of a bummer there. LG's a little slow on the updates, so hopefully uh, they get a little better with these. But again, it's $220 and you get a 6.8 inch screen, and it looks pretty good. Uh, what else do we want to check? All right, let's let's install Geekbench. So see, it's going slow. There's some definite lag in there, so it won't be as quick. My son might not want to switch from this uh, Reveille because the Reveille is pretty fluid for a budget device. Uh, obviously, the Pixel 3a XL is pretty solid as well, but the screen is something to be said for that. And it's potential that this is slower because I don't know if there's the RAM or the processor. And again, it's also brand new. There's updates to be had. I gotta install some bloatware. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Now we're just gonna run the benchmark from Geekbench 5. Uh, just for reference, this does not work on the Note. So this is my Note 10 Plus. Obviously, a over a thousand dollar phone, flagship. Oh, I guess we can compare style I. So here's the Note stylus versus the LG stylus. And again, the Note also has a button that you can program to do certain things. And it has a battery in here. This is just a stick of metal or whatever the hell it is. So we'll run these tests and we'll see who turns out better. I'm going to bet, uh, right now, everyone watching, I'm going to bet you all $10 that the Samsung scores better. So bets are in. No take backs. When these scores come out, anyone watching this is going to owe me $10 if the Samsung is better. When this game phone came out, I was such a fan of the LG Salon 3. I bought two uh, for different kids. I ended up giving this to my mother, and it worked her great. It worked great for her for a long time. She liked the size of it, and I bumped, I swapped her out with the Pixel 3 XL. But this one of my sons still has it, and then this one was in use until I just gave my mom my old Pixel 3 XL. Uh, this one worked like a champ. I mean, it was really pretty solid performer. The camera was the only nagging part about this one that kept it from being, uh, you know, a great device. Obviously, the camera on this won't be as good as the Note or the LG V60 that I have, but I think it'll be better than what's on here and potentially better than what's on that Revelry Plus that my son has. So, if this thing won't be as laggy, well, you can see this started before and it's still ending faster. So, performance will be a concern at this point. All right, so you can see this one started afterward and finished faster, I'm assuming, because it runs through things faster, obviously. So, here's the... Those scores are good. Uh, I recently got a Lenovo Chromebook. I think this is almost on par with the Chromebook I have. So, no 10 plus. I mean, again, for my money, which I spent on it, is the best phone I can have at the moment. When the Note 10 20 or the Note 10 20, when the Note 20 comes out, I might upgrade. I have the LG V60, which I like a lot, and I prefer the camera. It is actually my main YouTube video camera, which we're shooting this on now. So I do like LG cameras. So hopefully. This will have a pretty solid camera. Obviously, I'm going to cut most of this out, but this is taking a long time for this shit to run. I will say, personally, I don't use the stylus that much. I like having it, and certainly I can see the benefit of it, but I don't draw shit. Mostly, I do it when I take a screenshot, and I'll draw, I'll write something shitty to one of my friends and then send it to them. That's the main use of a stylus for me. But I do like the option, and more phones should include them because it's 
certainly like this, it doesn't cost very much money. And it doesn't take up very much room that they can, you know, there's still a 4,000 milliamp battery in here, so it's pretty good. Now, I would rather have more RAM than have a, a stylus, because for my money, I think RAM is one of the most important components of really any electronic, you know, really be it a Chromebook or MacBook or a Windows device or an Android phone. I think RAM is a very important piece of that puzzle. All right, this has taken forever. So that's a black and drastic difference. Uh, the 169 to the 709 and the 950 to 2650. And I'm not pretending like I know what all this shit means. I'm just saying, number-wise, this one's way ahead of that. Now look, <laughs> my device performs better than the average uh, Note 10 Plus. Um, there's probably no... This is brand new, so there's no average comparison for that guy, right? You can see how it compares to other devices. So we're pretty low. The next lowest is at 850. But again, those are much more expensive phones. Multi-core. Again, mine's performing pretty solid. Like I said, I'm a big, even mine's pretty close to this S20 Ultra, which is like a $1,400 phone. So I know this is the style of video, but pretty impressed with the old Note. All right, so again... Not the greatest scores here, but let's think about it this way. This shit's two hundred dollars. If you and it has a six point eight inch screen, the stylus. Look at T-Mobile sites. So if you're in the T-Mobile market, which I assume you are, to get shit like Bolty and Wi-Fi calling, you gotta kind of stick to T-Mobile phones. I've tried other phones and they just don't work as well. So yeah, look at the stats here, right? So this is T-Mobile phones. One plus eight five G. Obviously, it's seven hundred dollar phone. iPhone SE four hundred dollar phone. Twice as much as this one, just about iPhone 11, $700. Now, the $200 for that Galaxy A10e. I have a Galaxy video. So, I have a video on the South Sea T, uh, the Galaxy A20. And I end up keeping the Reverie over this one, over the A20. But they also didn't have as. This is the A10e, not even the A20. So, this is a $200 phone, but the A10e only has 32 gigs of memory, which is hot garbage. Uh, it's only a 5.8 inch screen. So, I mean, it's not even the same ballpark there right and it only has two gigs of ram so there's no question that this is better than the 810e in my brain iphone thousand dollars reverie is 168 dollars that's for the non-plus version so that is also only 32 gigs of bytes of memory uh only a 5.7 inch screen 3000 milliamp battery and three gigabytes of ram this has bigger screen better battery uh, the style of six of course this one so the k51 32 gigabytes of memory three gigabytes of ram 4,000 milliamp battery and a 6.5 inch screen. So uh, the K51 could be a potential contender for that price difference, but this is a newer one. Uh, the bigger screen's a big deal to me. Also a MediaTek processor. iPhone, 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 the K40. Again, LG is the king of these cheaper phones. 32 gigabytes of memory, 5.7 inch screen, so that's a no, no go in my book. Two gigabytes of RAM, definitely a no go. Uh, the V60, of course, went more expensive. S20, super expensive. Note 10, super expensive. 7T, expensive. 7 Pro, expensive. 450, I mean, it's twice as much, so it's not even the same conversation. I mean, that's a pretty good deal for the, that 7, for the 7 Pro, I guess. 450 is a, that's a lot of phone for that price. Uh, S10e is still $600. 7T is $500. Pixel 4, $800. Pixel 4 XL, iPhone X Max. So the Pixel 3a is a much smaller screen and still $400. The 3a XL is still not as big and still $479. Then you get down to this Aristo and the Stylo 5 and the Moto 6, the A20, and the Revelry Plus, which is still $300. So, again, for the money, this is probably one of the best options you can get, all things considered. I haven't run through the paces yet. We'll have to check it out. It's a cool little screen there. I mean, this is my HyperX microphone. No special lighting or anything. There's a camera app. So this uh, this picture is taken with the style with the style itself. I'll put that in the video. For my eyes, it looks pretty good here. Again, it's nothing major. I'm not doing anything. I didn't do any settings. It's all auto. So we'll see how it turns out. Anyhow, that's just the first look at this thing. Couple of quick notes I forgot to add here. Hold down here, little wallpapers, and there's a these are recommended ones. There's a couple built in. So you can see that one. That's the one that's already on, of course. There's 15 more here, so there's a uh, various wallpapers. 
Yeah, that's a cool wallpaper. You can change the grid shape. It's a pretty cool. So it has a Google feed next to it. So like if uh swipe this way, you'll have your Google feed. That's a good feature. And of course, you can uninstall some apps. So like T-Mobile Play, you can disable it. You can't disable that one. But I guess you can hide it. So if you go here, you can hide apps. And we'll click on FM radio and hide it. So now that app will not show there. Oh, and then we can also look at the uh, widgets. Standard stuff. The only difference will be the weather app. So there's the current weather, 3x1, 3x2, 2x1, 5x1, and 5x2. So some decent options there. All right. Uh, yeah, so I like the wallpaper a lot. So that's pretty good. Uh, well, like I said, we'll have some more videos later uh, showing some more features to this phone once we get more used to it. Alright, thanks.